Hey what's up, my name is Johannes and in today's video I want to talk about books. More specifically I want to talk about how you can approach books as a minimalist. I'm going to talk about all things minimalism and books. How many books should you have? How do you go about decluttering books or how do you go about buying new books? Those are some of the questions that I want to talk about in this video. I personally love books. I love how they feel. I love to read them. I love everything about them. So when I first started discovering minimalism and I started decluttering, my book collection still remained untouched for a long time. I had no problem getting rid of old t-shirts or old home decor, but getting rid of books somehow didn't even seem to be an option for me. That is, until I moved and I was forced to pack up everything I have. What I found was that all my personal belongings fit into only two moving boxes, but my books actually took up four boxes that were filled to the brim. That's when I decided to take stock of my books and what I realized was that the vast majority of my books were still unread and a lot of them were books that I didn't even want to read anymore. And that really made me think because I like to think of myself as someone who's very intentional about the things that I own, but apparently I didn't apply that intentionality to my books. So I started decluttering my books just as I had done with all my other belongings using the KonMari method. There were still quite a few unread books left so I decided not to buy any new books for a year so that I can make some progress on reading all those unread books. Along the way I learned a lot and I found a lot of tips and advice that help me to minimize my book collection and in this video I want to share these tips with you. So if you are in a similar situation, if you want to simplify your life but you don't really know how to approach your book collection or if you really like to read but you don't know how to fit that into your minimalist lifestyle, then hopefully this video is going to help you. First of all, why should you even apply minimalism to your books? Well, books take up a lot of space and moving with a lot of books can be really annoying. Trust me, I know that from experience. And if you have less books, that also makes cleaning a lot easier and faster. But there are also other reasons to downsize a book collection. One is that the number of books that you can read in your lifetime is limited. For example, I read around 30 to 40 books per year and right now I'm 27 years old, so I probably have another 50 years or so to live and that means that I will in my lifetime read another 1500 to 2000 books. So that is a limited number. We can't read every book that we want to read. That means that we have to be selective and that's why I think that it's so important that we are really intentional about the books that we own. Another reason for me to have less books is that I want to own only my favorite books. I think that there is something really beautiful about looking at your bookshelf and seeing only books that you truly love. I find that when I have a lot of books that I don't really care about, it distracts me from the books that I really like. So by getting rid of all those books, my favorite books get a lot more attention. And that means that I get a lot more joy from my personal library. So quality over quantity. So how many books should you have as a minimalist? I heard a lot of different answers to this question ranging from 1 to 100 but I think that there isn't really one correct answer to the question. You should have as many books as realistically make sense for you. If you live a nomadic lifestyle and everything you own has to fit into a backpack, then it probably makes sense for you to only own one or two books. But if you plan to live in the same place for a long time and you really enjoy being surrounded by books, then it probably makes sense for you to own more books. The only thing that really matters in the end is that you choose the books that you do decide to have intentionally. How many that happen to be doesn't really matter. It can be helpful though to establish some boundaries depending on your preferences. If for example you want to maintain a more minimalist aesthetic in your home, you could for example decide to have only 50 books or one bookshelf filled with books. There is nothing special about that number and you could 
just as easily choose to have only 10 books or to have 200 books. It is a completely arbitrary number and you get to choose that number yourself. But what it does is it forces you to be more intentional about the books that you decide to keep and the books that you bring into your life. And that can be very helpful. But as I said, it's not about the number. What's a lot more important is that you are intentional about the books that you decide to keep and that you bring in new books thoughtfully. Okay, now how do you actually go about minimizing your book collection? I use the KonMari method to declutter my books. When you are decluttering using that method, you take each book into your hands and you ask yourself, does this spark joy? And if the answer is yes, then you keep it. And if the answer is no, you let go of it. I didn't use the spark joy question when it came to my books, but instead I chose to take a more practical approach and keep only books that fit into one of these categories. Books that I still want to read. One example here for me would be The Count of Monte Cristo. This is a book that I haven't read yet, but I know that I do want to read it. So I'm going to keep it and once I have read it, then I'm going to decide if I want to hold on to it or not. Books that I have read but want to read again. One example here would be Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. The moment I finished this book, I already knew that I was going to read it again because I had such a strong emotional connection to this book and it had a really strong impact on me. Another example would be Walden by Henry David Thoreau. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I've already read it twice and I know that I'm going to read it again. Books that I keep for reference. This includes mainly non-fiction books that contain information that I know I want to reference later on. One example for this category would be How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. This is a book about nutrition that I often reference whenever I feel like I should be eating healthier. Another one would be Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. This is a book that I look for advice in whenever I feel like my digital habits get out of hand. I also have some photography books in this category that for example contain information about lighting techniques or camera settings. If a book doesn't fit into any of these categories, I usually get rid of it. These are, for example, books that I have read but am not going to read again. This is especially the case with books like thrillers or vacation reads that I read purely for entertainment. These books are usually not that interesting once you know what's going to happen. I just read Inferno by Dan Brown and I really enjoyed it, but now I know how it ends. I know all the secrets and plot twists and those are the things that make it fun to read. Those are the things that make it interesting. So I know I'm probably not going to read it again. And this is also the case with nonfiction books that are no longer relevant to me. When I wrote my bachelor's thesis, for example, I read a book on scientific writing. It helped me a lot with writing the thesis, but now that I graduated, it is no longer relevant for me. I used to hold on to all books that I hadn't read yet. But at some point I asked myself, am I really going to read them or do I even want to read them? I felt kind of guilty letting go of these books because at some point I bought them with the intention of reading them. So just letting go of them felt wrong. But I realized that there is no value in holding on to books that I'm not going to read. They just take up space and they make you feel guilty. The same goes for books that you received as gifts. If you aren't going to read them, pass them on to somebody who actually wants to read them. And if you are unsure about a book, just read the first few chapters and that will usually give you a pretty good idea if you want to read the rest or not. Now, if you found some books in your bookshelf that you want to let go of, please don't just throw them away. There are many better ways to get rid of books. My favorite way of decluttering books is to sell them. This is really a win-win scenario because you get some money for your book, which is always really helpful. And at the same time, you know that the person who gets the book is willing to pay for it. So that means that they usually are really interested in this book and they are probably going to read it. There are many websites that buy pretty much every book. They usually don't pay very much, but they are very convenient. So just Google the equivalent of sell books online or something like that in your language and you will probably find something. Another option is to give your old books to friends. Of course, you shouldn't just dump all your old books on your friends, but if you have a book that you know a friend of you might really enjoy, then they're most likely really going to appreciate the gift. 
something that I often do is to give books that I no longer want to a book exchange. They are places where you can bring your old books and in return you can take books that other people brought there. You can often find them in universities or cafes or hostels or in public places. Just google for book exchange and the name of your city and you are probably going to find something. I've heard of people who travel the world always carrying only one book and when they finish it they bring it to a book exchange and get a new one in return. So they always have something to read but they never have to carry more than one book. Depending on the type of book you might also be able to donate it to for example libraries or schools or other organizations. Just ask if they might be interested in taking your books and it might even lead to a wonderful interaction. I for example once donated an old meditation cushion for me to the local Buddhist community and my visit there was really such a beautiful experience for me. And if all else fails just put your books in a cardboard box, take a sharpie and write free books on the box and just put it in a place where a lot of people walk by. And that usually should do the trick. Okay, say you decluttered your book collection and your library is now a well-curated selection of your favorite books and you want to keep it that way. But sometimes you are going to want to buy a new book. So it is very important that you bring new books into your life intentionally. One thing that I find very helpful is to try to read all of your unread books before you bring in new books. Especially if you are like me and you have a lot of unread books. That's why I am currently doing a challenge where I don't buy any books for years so that I can make some progress on my unread books. If you are in a similar situation Situation, you might also want to give this a try. When you do decide to buy a new book make sure that it's a book that you really do want to read. I often used to go to bookstores and then come out with bags full of books that I bought on an impulse. But in the future my plan is to always buy only one book. Only the one book that I plan on reading next. And if you want to buy a book that you don't plan on reading next maybe don't buy it and just write it on a books to read list instead. If at some point you decide that you now want to read it you can easily get it then. That way you can make sure that you don't accumulate countless unread books like I did and I really wish that I had applied this rule earlier. Something you should keep in mind is that you don't always have to buy a book in order to read it. In most places there are libraries where you can borrow books very inexpensively. That way you can save money, avoid cluttering your book collection and at the same time it's a lot more eco-friendly because no new books have to be produced. Another alternative to traditional books are ebooks. A Kindle or a similar ebook reader doesn't really take up more space than a slim paperback book and it literally can hold thousands of books. Many classic books are even available for free because the copyright has expired and they are now in the public domain. You can find them on websites like Project Gutenberg but also in ebook stores like the Kindle store. Ebooks really seem to be the perfect solution for minimals, but I have to admit that I prefer the experience of physical books. I just like how they feel and smell and I really enjoy the tactile experience. So I use my Kindle very rarely but many minimalists swear not so if you haven't tried it yet you should definitely give it a try. You can find very affordable used ebook readers online. But like I said I personally prefer physical books so what I often do is to buy used books. You can find physical used bookstores but there are also many used bookstores online where you can find very affordable books. This is also a very good eco-friendly alternative to buying new books. Now some people have concerns about buying used books because when you buy used books you don't support the author of the book. I totally get that you want to support your favorite authors but I don't think that buying new books is necessarily necessary to do so. Many authors have donate buttons on their websites or they have Patreon accounts. So you can use the money that you save when buying used books and use it to support your favorite authors. All right, this is everything that I have to say on this topic for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, let me know by liking this video and leaving a comment down below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I will see you if you want in my next video.